All right, we just started recording, so go ahead and hit, hit OK to verify that. And we are going to post this recording online as soon as we are done today. And well, get that up shit. shortly. For you. All right. Um, start with some housekeeping issues. If you are not yeah. muted, go ahead and mute yourself now. Um, you can unmute at any time to ask a question. We want to make sure that uh, we don't have distractions in the background as we're going through. So go ahead and mute yourself. You can unmute yourself again at any time to ask a question. Um, or uh, you can put questions into the chat today. So if you are not muted, go ahead and mute yourself, please. Otherwise, I'll mute you myself. All right. Thank you. We're going to get started. Thank you and welcome to the first of our four AEP educational series for 2024. Uh, today, we're going to start off real quick. First, I'd like to introduce Ken Heckman. Ken is the founder and CEO of Axia Cooperative, and Axia is our education partner and has sponsored this year's webinars, allowing us to bring them to all of you at no cost. Ken is going to provide you a little information about Axia and talk about how you and your agencies can leverage their national cooperative contracts to deliver savings and efficiencies to your agencies. Go ahead, Ken. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. I'm going to share my screen real quick, if that's okay. Bear with me. All right, that, that's me. Well, hello, AEP uh, applicants, and uh, thank you for allowing me time today on, uh, on today's call. Uh, I'm Ken Heckman. I'm the founder and CEO of Axia Cooperative, and we're just so proud uh, to partner with NPI as they bring you this uh, AEP educational series. Uh, you know, AEP has long been one of the highest recognitions uh, for those who serve in public procurement, and we're just so, so uh, supportive of that. We applaud you for your interest and, and for your willingness to be a part of the program and, and go through the application process. And we also applaud you for the value you bring to your organizations. Um, you may not be familiar with Axia Cooperative. Uh, we are fairly new, but we are rapidly growing. We're one of the fastest growing uh, cooperatives uh, or cooperative purchasing organizations in the marketplace today. Uh, we collaborate closely with influencers and esteemed leaders of the procurement profession, or profession um, to provide a wide-ranging uh, portfolio of uh, publicly solicited and awarded master agreements. Uh, our goal is to leverage national volume to bring you savings and, and make the procurement process a little bit more efficient for you. And uh, what you'll love to, to, to know is that all of our contracts, every one of them in the Axia portfolio has been publicly solicited and uh, awarded by an AEP award winner. And so what that means is that you, you can be assured that the, the process that they went through is one that you can trust and that the that it was led by people that you respect and trust as well. Uh, and it will meet your compliance standards. So we're excited about that. Uh, I'm gonna just go to the next slide if I can. No, it's not going, but um, I invite you to visit our website, uh, axiacoop.org. Um, and, and there you can explore the many agreements that we have. And um, uh, you can see that we have an unwavering commitment to excellence, just like uh, uh, NPI does. Uh, for those of you who are past winners uh, of the AP award, if you have an interest in exploring uh, what it takes to be a lead agency or, or you're interested in being a lead agency on, on other contracts, uh, I invite you to contact, uh, contact me directly. But um, uh, overall, I just want to say that, you know, we are dedicated to promoting your profession and pursuing excellence. And uh, we want to help you maximize the value that you bring to your organizations 
and we just thank you for the opportunity to partner with you. We wish you good luck uh, as you go through the uh, application process this year, and hopefully uh, we'll get to visit with you uh, when the awards are, are given by um, Brian later in the year. So uh, thank you for this time, Brian. Appreciate it. Thank you for uh, all, all y'all's time, and uh, uh, good luck with the application. Thanks, Ken. We appreciate it. And before you leave, can you do me one favor? Just say, sure. engage. Engage. <laughs> you got a comment that says you look like Captain Picard from Star Trek. <laughs> oh, engage. Yes, I do. I get that all the time. So, <laughs> you know, if anybody wants autographs or take a photo with me, you know, we'll see you at the NPI conference and you could do that. But I'm not wearing a Captain Picard suit. I could tell you. <laughs> Uh, uh, real quick, Ken, you got one more question on here. It says, are you a joint powers authority? We are not a public, uh, we, we use a lead agency process. So we are cooperative and uh, we work with lead agencies like, uh, um, you know, the County of San Diego or the, the city of Tucson or the Golden Gate Bridge Highway and Transportation District. And we have a number of additional lead agencies, all AEP award winners that are working on um, future contracts for us as well. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate yep. that. And and just a note, there is no other cooperative um, in the country that only utilizes AEP award winners as lead agencies. So we appreciate that, Ken. We appreciate the support, and we appreciate you sponsoring this webinar today. And as a side note, if you do want to be a joint, uh, or excuse me, if you do want to be a lead agency through Axia, uh, with Ken, make sure you contact him and you can gain additional AEP points on Criterion 16, which is Cooperative Procurement Strategy. Thanks, Brian. All right. Thanks, Ken. Okay. With that, we're going to jump in. Just for those of you have, who have joined after my little opening speech, uh, please put yourselves on mute. Uh, however, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question, or you can put a question in chat. We're going to be monitoring that as well as we go along today. So whatever works for you. And today's uh, webinar is going to, we're gonna cover a few things. We're gonna cover the application process for those of you who may be new to the Achievement of Excellence and Procurement Award, or this is your first year actually completing the award, or you'd like just uh, some updates on, on the program itself and how to go through. So we'll take those steps. I'll guide you through submitting an application um, all the way to the payment process. In addition, we're going to cover those things that are new for this year's application. So for people who have submitted the application uh, in the past, they know that we update our criteria each and every year, some small changes, some big changes, but we wanna make sure that we cover what those changes are so that you're not surprised when you get the application this year and you start filling it out. So with that, I am going to now share my screen and I'm gonna take you through uh, the process of filling out an application. All right, just to verify, can someone tell me yes, if they can see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So uh, again, feel free to throw things in chat. Uh, we've got our executive director, Craig Raleigh, monitoring these in the background. So he may, if I don't see it, he'll catch it and hopefully shout out some of those questions as we go through. All right, um, npi-aep.org is our home screen. For those of you, again, who are new, NPI is the National Procurement Institute. We are the creators and founders of the Achievement of Excellence and Procurement Award. And we're also sponsored by other procurement associations across North America. And that includes CAPO, FAPO, NAEP, TECSPA, um, the Canadian Public Procurement Council, which is CPPC, and am I missing anybody? I think that's it. We've got we've got uh, seven total sponsors. Oh, excuse me, GFOA, Government Finance Officers Association, also sponsors the AEP award. So um, again, I'm going to take you through this. If you um, this is your first time logging in, you're going to go. You're going to want to go to the tab that says AEP award, and then slide right down to Applications and Instructions. I'm not going to go to these other pages, but please note we've got lists of recipients, who serves on the evaluation committee, sponsors, you all registered. So you've been to this section, the AEP educational series, all the way down to our new AEP certified providers. 
which we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So I'm going to start a new application under Applications and Instructions, and then proceed directly to this tab, the AEP, AEP Application Login. Now, if this is your first time, you know what? I'm sorry, I was already logged in. Let me log out and start over. Um, if this is your first time, let me go back. You're gonna have to create a user ID. Here we go. So your first time you register a new account and create a new user ID. For those of you who already have accounts, then you know how to log in. And my page is going to look a little bit different than yours because I'm an administrator and it takes me to this screen right away. But this is what you're going to see when you first log in. Uh, this is your application information. And there's some things on here that are going to be required for you to fill out. Um, and the first one is whatever you want to put on the trophy. So this is your organization name. And for me, hopefully I can type fast, Golden Gate Bridge, Highway and Transportation District. Hopefully yours isn't quite as long as me, but it's going to be, you know, your county, your city, your school district, your university. Um, uh, some people also put, you know, procurement department after their organization, but it's however you want your name to appear on the trophy. Because when we're done and you receive the award, we take this right off of here and give it to the engraver. Next, we want, to, want you to fill out the information for your procurement official. Mine's already pre-filled. And then we're going to want you to fill out the name of your organization official, who you want notified when you're successful, right? We want to share this with our, our mayors, our chairmen, our city managers. Um, so whoever you want to share this excellent news with, you're going to put their information here. And for me... It's Dennis, and he is our, I need to spell his name right, he is our general manager, and then organization name, this is the official name of your organization, for me it's the same thing as up here, so I'm going to copy it, this again is a required field, and your organization name. And then we want to tell well, you want it to we want you, excuse me, to tell us what type of organization you are. City, county, higher ed, school district, special district, state agency, or other. We have a few others. We have some hospitals. Uh, we have some uh, other nonprofits that don't qualify as a special district. Uh, but for me, I'm a special district. And I'm gonna put that there and I'll fill out the other information. Also, don't forget to change the state. Um, because otherwise you're going to, everybody's going to be in Alabama. We've got everything loaded here. And I think we have um, all of the, um, the territories of, and our site just went down. Interesting. Let me see if I can get out of this and go right back in. I apologize for that error. I did this. Okay. okay. Let's, see. Let's go right back in. Sorry for the delay. All right, right back into my application. And of course it didn't save anything. Um, because I didn't get there. And I'm just going to fill out the required things here real quick. All right. And once you fill in this information, you click Save and Continue, and it's going to take you to the criterion page. And you'll notice that I've already started on this to provide some examples, but once you start, everything is going to be great. It's gonna show as incomplete. And what you wanna do is go to each criteria that you wanna submit for. So for example, uh, procurement 
ethics policy. And I'm going to upload a copy of my ethics policy. Make sure that you read the criteria here and what's required. And we tell you exactly what to submit. So make sure where it says submit, you provide that information. Please don't provide extraneous information because it takes us a lot of time to get through that. Provide what we say to submit. And then you're going to click and that yes, you would like to submit a response. And I need to delete my previous response so I can do this. So I want to submit a response. I'm going to click yes. Choose my file that I want to submit. And then it's just going to open up your Windows Explorer. And wherever you decide to save your files at, I'm picking my file from last year, procurement ethics policy. I'm going to upload that and click submit. And then it takes me on to criterion two. And then you do the same thing all the way throughout. Now, note I have some here that are red. Those are ones that I did not provide answers to. Excuse me, I did not provide submissions to. So for example, we're gonna to go to 4B and instead of saying yes and uploading a file, I'll just click on no and submit. And then it knows, it highlights it as red. It knows that I'm not submitting on that criterion, jumps to the, to the next one. Please, if you're not submitting it for a particular criteria in the past, we've had people upload a document that says we're not submitting. Don't do that because to us, it looks like you are submitting something. And then we have to go in and open it and read it and it takes additional time. All you have to do here is just say, no, I'm not uploading anything and proceed to the next. Uh, a couple notes about this. One, you can jump around. You don't have to go criterion by criterion. If you have something ready for 16, your cooperative procurement strategy, and want to upload it, great. Go ahead and do that. And then you can go back and forth through these until you have either A, they all say complete, or excuse me, they all, they all are blue for complete, or they are red that you decided you're not going to submit anything. Okay, before I leave the actual process of submitting the documents, I'm going to open it up. Is there anybody that has any questions on the, the process for submitting? You can go ahead and put that in chat or you can unmute yourself and ask. Okay, Marie, what's your question? While well, she's typing in her question, if anybody else wants to, to open up their mic and ask a question, feel free. Also note that we have some of our evaluation team on this call today. And so they may provide some input as well if we have time towards the end or answer questions that I can't. So I got one question. Um, sorry, Maria, you said your phone's not working. Go ahead and type it into to chat if you can. Um, at this point, is there a running total of the score? Well, kind of. And when I what I say by that, it, what I mean by that, excuse me, is once you get to criterion 18 and you either say yes or no, uh, the system's going to tell you that how many points you have. So I understand that I'm eligible for at most 135 out of 200, and I wish to finalize my application. So this is saying I have submitted something for 135 points. Doesn't mean that I've qualified for all of those, um, but I've submitted for 135. Yeah, now, yeah. once you click this button, you're going to finalize your application. So do you want to? Are you sure you want to proceed? Uh, make sure that that you are before you click this. If not, you go back 
to your responses and you can upload additional I can information. I hear it, but it's like it's just coming from the computer. April has a recommendation for tracking your scores. Go ahead, April. Hi. Uh, what I've been doing, and I think this will be our 22nd year for my agency, but what we've done from the very beginning is we downloaded that self-score sheet at the back of the application. We downloaded that into Excel, and then every year we put the number of points that we're going to pursue and uh, total it at, at the bottom to see uh, whether we're going to make more points or less points than what we've done before. Or if this is your very first year, that's a really good way of seeing whether you're even close to being eligible. Excellent, April. Thank you. It's a, that is a, uh, an excellent way to do that. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to stop sharing and switch over just just uh, to that page just so everybody can can uh, see what April is talking about. And let me find that window. So here we are on the AEP application, and you'll see the very last page is that self score sheet that April's talking about. So you can go through and use this to see how many points that you uh, that you're applying for. All right. Now let's see if I can go back. Is everybody seeing the criteria page again? April good. Okay, thank you. All right, let me check chat one more time and see if we have any additional Comments. Okay, someone asked, what is the preferred font type? Honestly, we don't have a preference, just as long as it's legible. I uh, would probably avoid, um, you know, fonts that are that are too hard to read. Let's see, Marisa, I submitted all but two criteria. I returned to submit the last two and I had to resubmit all previous criteria. And that is interesting. I don't have an answer to that. The only thing I could think is that it's, if you signed in the second time under a different login, because the, the system saves everything um, as, as you enter it. So I'm not sure why you wouldn't see your previous your previous application. But if you have that issue, you can contact me directly and we'll see if we can figure that out. Shannon says, we're very new to this. What score do you need to be awarded? Excellent question. You need 100 points, Shannon. So if you if you saw the, the application, there are 200 points possible and 100 is a successful application. The reason that, that it's done that way is there, there are a lot of things that even though they're best practices, some agencies can achieve them, whether it's to, to legislation, um, policy, internal control, things like that. So, so we understand that. Not everybody is going to, we have actually only had one agency in the history of the program get 200 points once. Um, and, and so as you go through that self-score sheet, you know, if you have 100 points, then, then you can be successful. However, always apply for more um, because generally most applications don't receive all points that they apply for. Somewhere throughout there's uh, a piece of information missing um, or something happens where we have to deduct points and the committee doesn't like you know, to fail people. So always try for 110, 120, just to make sure that you're gonna get through. Um, John, John, I think correctly, Brian. Uh, yes, hundred points is what qualifies you for the award, or is that just is that just to move your application to the next stage? No, if you are if you are if you have a hundred points, you are successful, and you will receive the award. Um, and and just for for those of you new to the program, for um, your reference, we had two hundred and twenty six applications last year, and one hundred and ninety four are awarded were awarded, excuse me. We're generally in that percentage range 
of people that, that, that apply to those that are accepted, you know, 10 to 15 percent um, historically have, have not received the award. Um, but, you know, we, we'd like to give it to everybody. And, and so we want to make sure that's one of the reasons we, we host these educational sessions. Uh, we can all be contacted and I'll give you some contact information at the end. And, and we're willing to help. We provide mentors um, and the evaluation team, you know, helps others along as well. Just to note, we are all practitioners and we are all volunteers. Um, so we want to make, you know, we, we do this because we want to, to, uh, raise the value of our profession in the organizations that we serve. And, and so we want you to be successful as well. Uh, good question. And I, I don't know if the, the name is pronounced Zaylord or Zlord. So I apologize, but do the same judges review all criteria or do some judges review only certain criteria? That, that's a great question. And the way we set it up is we have teams of two and each team will get multiple criteria to review, but they will not review the entire application. So for example, if April and Sean are on a team, they may get, they may get criteria three, four, and five, and they will review three, four, and five for all of the applications. And the reason we do this is to maintain consistency in how everybody is evaluated and scored. Um, so no one scores in an entire application. In addition, both Sean and April have to agree on that score in order for us to continue. So if one says pass and one says fail, then they will get together and discuss, you know, with themselves, someone that may have missed something, um, or uh, we discuss it with the entire team and come to a consensus. But each, uh, each team of those two people have to agree on your score. Roseanne asks, how do we sign up to be a future evaluator for submissions? Well, Roseanne, we've got a, um, a couple of ways. One, we have, we have evaluators from all of our sponsoring organizations. So if you are a member of one of those sponsoring organizations, again, Capo FAPO, TEXPA, NAEP, GFOA, NPI, or NIGP, uh, you can apply through them to become an evaluator. Uh, we we as an NPI, <laughs> we only appoint our own evaluators that, are, that represent the National Procurement Institute. All the other sponsoring organizations appoint their evaluators. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, with that, I'm going to continue on. We're about halfway through. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. I'm going to continue on and show you how the payment Brian. works. Yes. Lori Tapp wants to find out how to contact a mentor. <coughs> oh, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, thank you, April. Um, Lori, you can contact me at aep at npiconnection.org. Um, my information is also on our website. And you can email me and I will work at assigning you a mentor. Uh, what we do is we look at your organization type and we try and match mentors with that organization type. For example, April works for a county, Sean works for a city, I work for a special district. We have people that represent um, schools, higher education, airport authorities. So we try and make that connection for you. Thanks, April. And thanks for the question, Lori. Marie asks, will we be able to submit the same information if it is unchanged from the previous year? The answer is yes. I will caution you, make sure that you pay attention to the dates because uh, the dates change every year. Some of the criteria you have to redo every year. Some are two to three years, some are even five years, depending on the criteria. So uh, if it is your, like for example, criterion one, the ethics policy, you don't have to update that every year. If it's the same ethics policy, just resubmit it. Uh, but if you're providing an example of a, best value solicitation, then it has to be within since January 1st of 2023. So make sure sometimes people will submit one that's old because they forget to update and we have to uh, deny them points. So pay attention to the date parameters for each individual criteria. You're welcome. All right, I am going to take you through the payment process real quick.
and then we will go to talk about what was uh, what's changed for this year. So I've completed my application. It tells me I'm eligible for 135 out of 200 points and I want to finalize my application. Yes, I do. I'm gonna click that button. And then we just get a little reminder of our National Procurement Institute Conference and that we also provide the list of recipients to other sponsoring organizations. You agree that your application is final and that you allow us to use the submitted documents to further promote the program and the public purchasing profession. Yes, absolutely. And now I need to make payment, okay? And the easiest way to make payment is online by clicking this link here. And note when I do that, it opens up a new page if I or a new tab. I go back, I'm still at that tab. Don't close that, okay? I'm gonna go to my payment page here. And if I am an NPI member, and I'm gonna enter my user name, which is my email address and my password. And I'm gonna log into my NPI membership. If I am not a member, then you would have to create a, a, a login ID. Now, I will tell you, if you're not a member of NPI, become a member before you submit your application. Membership is $130, and you get a $200 discount on the application. So no one should be paying um, an extra $200 for their application when you can save 70 by just becoming an NPI member. In addition, you get access to the AEP model submittals, um, discounts on our national conference, access to our job board, things like that. So make sure that you sign up. Um, now, if you have a, another person who's a member in your organization, then you can use their membership credentials to get the discount. You would just have to enter those membership credentials at this page, okay? And then I'm going to click register myself. It tells me that my application fee is $495. That's what I wanna pay. Click next, it's going to take me to a payment page. Pay now, if I click on pay now, it's going to take me to a page to enter my credit card information, or you can click invoice me and we'll send you an invoice. We would prefer payment online. Uh, hopefully uh, each of you have a, a robust P card program that you can use to pay online. It makes things a lot easier for, for us and for you, you don't have to uh, get an invoice, issue a PO and a check and things like that. So um, anyways, uh, I'm not going to click on pay now because I don't want to submit my application because that was just a test one. But when I do, it's going to give me a code. And what I need to do is take that code, copy it, and go back to this page and enter the code here. Now we had quite a few people last year that stopped at this step. You know, they they said they're going to pay now. They entered their credit card information. They click submit payment, and they didn't take that code. And you need to take that code and go back to this tab and enter that to finalize your application. Otherwise, it doesn't come into our system as final. We think you're still working on it. Um, so, so please, when you get that code, come back to this tab, enter the code, and click submit. All right, do we have any questions on, on payment? I'm gonna go back through the, the text here, or excuse me, the chat. It says, so any examples can be dated from January 1st, 2023 to May 15th, 2024. If that's, uh, if that's the correct date parameter, um, yes. So what that means is, you know, we give you a year plus until you submit. So for example, if you're submitting your application on on May the 1st, you can use um, you can use samples or examples or supporting documentation from, from whatever that beginning date is, whether it's January 1st of 2023 or 2022 or 2021, whatever that criterion is, you can use anything some, all the way up until the date that you submit, okay? So it gives you a year plus 
on, on these or two years plus or three years plus? That's a good question. I think I answered this question. Do all of our buyers need to be members or just one membership for the agency? Just one membership. Um, you know, anybody can be a member. Um, there's other benefits than just submitting the Achievement of Excellence and Procurement application for a discounted fee. But if you uh, if you are submitting the application, you just need one member's credentials to get that discount code and get the discounted the two hundred dollar discounted. All right. Before I move on to what's new for this year, any other questions on the actual submission or payment process? Brian. Yes. Can you show uh, members how to access the model submittals? I sure can. I'm going to go ahead and go there now. I'm going to start from the NPI homepage. And if you are a member, again, $130, you get a $200 discount. Become a member of NPI, you have access to the model submittals. And you click on the member login information, enter your user ID. Again, it's your email address. I'm going to log in. It's going to take me to my home screen for my login information. And to access the model submittals, you hover over this members only tab and you can see the drop down says AEP model submittals in the job board. So I'm going to go to the AEP model submittals. And here, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with this, we select four to six um, submissions each year for every criteria and we post them as model submittals. So if you scroll through here and you're having a question on 4E, and you decide that you uh, need a little help, you can take a look at what uh, LVCBA has submitted or Sarasota County Government. We've only got two on that one, but most of them have four to five. And that's gonna allow you to, to get some information on if you're stuck on how to present it or um, what data has been presented. Again, we'll click on one of April's, Placer County for Criterion 9. And her submittal was deemed for Criterion 9, a model submittal from last year. And so we're going to post her submission there. Um, and you'll be able to access those model submittals as a member. All right. Go back to the model submittal screen. And let's see, where do I want to go? Let's go back into my application. Any other questions on the application process or navigating our site? <laughs> One more thing. Yes. For those uh, returning applicants, how can they see their scorecard from last year mm -hmm. so that they can improve on any items that received comments? Fantastic. Uh, the answer to that is we go to the history tab. So if you've submitted in the past, uh, once we started digital submissions, which was 2015, I believe was our first year, um, you will be able to see all of your responses back until we went digital. So for example, my organization has submitted uh, for the last six years, show seven, but I really didn't put one in, in 2017, I started. Uh, so if I wanna go back and take a look at my scorecard from 2023, I can see my scorecard, any comments, um, and also download what I submitted. If I don't have that saved somewhere else, then I can download exactly what I submitted for that criteria. Brian, it's Christina. Hello, Christina. Would you mention um, that if they did not receive points on a criterion that they submitted for, um, that there will always be a comment on their scorecard as to why? to help them improve in 
future years. That's excellent. And I think you just did a great job of that, Christina. Thank you. So what she's talking about, if, if everybody didn't get it in the, in the history tab on your scorecards, uh, the evaluators are required to put comments if you did not successfully receive points on a particular criteria. And what we do is we try and tell you either what you were missing or what you need to do next year. Sometimes when things are marginal, we'll, we'll give you the points this year, the benefit of the doubt, but we'll say next year, please submit this or format it in, in this way, or we need to see this. Make sure that you, uh, glad you brought that up, make sure that you review the scorecards and that you can see those comments and especially if you weren't successful on a particular criterion, because that'll help you next year. Unfortunately, we have people that don't look at their scorecards and they submit the same thing again the following year or the following year after that, and we fail them again. And we can see, the evaluators can see our own notes from last year. So if we told you last year, hey, we're going to give you the points this year, but for next year, please do this, and you don't, then we won't award you points this year. So please go through your scorecards, um, see the notes, and, and, and pay particular attention to those where you may have not scored well. All right, I got a couple more questions in the chat. I'm going to go through. There are two questions that we state governments do not qualify for more. My organization would like to submit a narrative with an explanation and consideration that we don't meet those criteria. Is that not acceptable? If not, may we email you directly with our situation? Um, you can you can email me if you submit that information to the committee. It's not going to be accepted. We do modify the criteria um, again every year. The committee goes through and we update the criteria. So if if we get enough responses and uh, saying why you can't qualify, then we may consider modifying the criteria. Keep in mind though, like I said. We know that everybody can't meet all the criteria, which is why you only need 100 out of 200 points. You know, one of the big ones is Criterion 17, which is the uh, award authority of the chief procurement official. And the best practice is that the chief procurement official has unlimited award authority. The reason that's a best practice is to keep contract awards in the hands of procurement professionals and not um, people that are elected to boards. Um, but probably only about 30% of organizations can meet that. And that doesn't mean that it's still not a best practice. It just means that you can't meet that. But again, it's okay um, because not everybody can meet everything. But just telling us you can't meet it and telling us why isn't going to get you the points. It would have to be something that we would discuss with the committee and decide if we want to modify the criteria or not. Uh, next question, if the explanation provided is unclear, who can we contact for clarification? If you're, um, if you are referring to the explanation on the scorecards, you can contact me and again, AEP at npiconnection.org. That information is, is in multiple places. It's also on the letters that we send out, um, notifying you of your success or not. Uh, and keep in mind also, we wait approximately two weeks after we score because we make mistakes. The evaluation committee isn't perfect. You know, we're reviewing approximately 30 criteria uh, across, you know, over 200 applications. And there are times that we make mistakes. So we allow people uh, approximately about, depending on when it falls, uh, a two week buffer to, to contact us and say, hey, I think you made a mistake here. Can you review it? And then we do, a lot of times we award points, sometimes we don't, but we give that buffer period. To clarify, is the history based on the organization itself or the person's login who submitted the application? The history is based on the, the organization. Now there's a caveat to that. Our database is set up so that it uses the domain of your email address or you, your URL as the primary key. So for example, mine is at goldengate.org. So everything after 
my name, at goldengate.org, is what ties all my applications together. Now, if someone else went in and looked at, um, you know, they logged in with um, uh, one of our other employees, Kim Barnard, right? So Kay Barnard at goldengate.org, she created a user ID. She would be tied to the at goldengate.org applications. She can see the history. She can see the, the scorecard and the notes. The only thing that she would not be able to do is upload the responses that I submitted. Only the person who originally submitted the response, upload, download, excuse me, only the person that originally submitted the response could download the file. But she would be able to see the history and, and tie to that, that application as well. Because I may have missed it, can you provide the benefit of having a mentor do the review submissions or answer specific questions? Well, the, um, answer your second question first, they answer specific questions. Our mentors, uh, again, are practitioners. They have other jobs. They're also most likely submitting or helping to prepare their AEP application. And because they don't review every single question on the application, they, they answer questions or they um, ask other people on the evaluation team if they don't know the answers. So they'll help you through the process and answer questions, but they're not going to review and comment on your entire application. Sherry asks, can I see the questions prior to paying to apply? Yes. And let me show you how you can do that, Sherry. On the application login page, there is an item here that says download the 2024 AEP application. And that is our PDF format. And so anybody, um, whether you're a member or not, or are planning to apply, you can download the application there. And then you can also download the changes summary and list of revisions for this year. And that's my next topic, and I'm going to go into that because we only have about 10 minutes left. I want to make sure that I cover. So every year, like I said, we modify the application, we update it, we change the criteria. So we put out a, a one, page, one or two page summary on what has changed. Please make sure if you've submitted in the past, you review this. We don't want you to miss stuff and just submit what you did last year. Um, so, so we verify the application due date, Wednesday, May 15th, 2024. Almost always it's May 15th. It used to be May 30th, January, February, March, or maybe 31st. Um, we, we moved it back to May 15th to give our committee more time to review. Um, so, so Wednesday, May 15th, it is due, and that's going to be midnight Central time, excuse me, 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time on May 15th. We also just, we say this each and every year, please look at the date requirements. I've mentioned it a couple of times, verify those. Those change every single year. Um, we have instituted some things that we don't specifically list on here, just verbiage changes um, to uh, better clarify the criteria. And everything that's changed, we italicize. So if you see an, uh, something that's italicized, it's the change uh, in this year. And specifically, some of the things that we have changed, um, Criterion 6. Uh, we clarified a, the, the placement of procurement amongst other finance-related departments. So this is the procurement department's organizational, or where they fall in the organizational structure. The intent is that we place procurement or the CFO, CPO at a high enough level in the organization that they have significant impact and input into the organization uh, and the, the, the strategies, the budget, things like that. Um, so we always have a, a little bit difficulty each year with this. And so we clarified that this year that um, procurement and accounting can both report to the chief financial officer but procurement should not reside in a lower managerial level than an accounting or budget director. So um, for example, I'll give you my organization. Uh, we have an officer of the board that is the chief financial officer of the organization. And um, so he is one level below the board of directors and reporting to him are myself, the director of procurement, director of budget, director of accounting, and uh, director of capital and grants. And so we're all at the same department level. Uh, we're department directors, but we report to the chief financial officer. 
So we wanted to clarify that that type of reporting structure is okay, uh, that it meets the intent of this criterion. What we don't want to see is we don't want to see a purchasing manager who reports to a finance director. Um, and, and again, we just want to make sure that everybody's at the same level in the organization to have significant input and leadership roles in that organization. We understand that people have different reporting structures and really it's all about collaboration, right? We all work with each other in the departments. We all have a piece in the financial uh, health of the organization. So we want to make sure that that uh, reporting structure is indicative of such and that that relationship is there. Um, John, I'm going to go to you first. Raise your hand. What can we help you out with, sir? So my organization, the procurement department reports to a chief of staff and the finance accounting FP&A report to the chief financial officer. But I'm a director and I have peer directors in FP&A accounting. Is that an acceptable organizational structure? Uh, my question was, this? Yeah, my question would be is that the it, who you report to the chief of staff, I think you said. Yeah, are, I they, report to chief are, staff. are they the same level in the organization as the chief financial officer? Yes. Okay. Then that would be perfect because you are at the same reporting, you know, organizational level, you're at the, you're at the same reporting structure. It doesn't okay. necessarily, you know, some people report to, honestly, their public works department. Some people report to an administration department. And it's not necessarily who the CFO reports to, which, you know, in, in, in the, you know, in the utopia for us, the, the chief procurement officer would report to the general manager or the town manager or whoever the top official is. Um, but, you know, we're just making, we want to make sure that you're on that same level. If that makes sense. Yep. Makes perfect sense. Thank you. Okay. And we've got another question chat. How about an assistant CFO? Uh, I think it's, it's, you know, kind of the same um, answer. If the director or manager or whoever your chief procurement official is reports to an assistant CFO. We just want to make sure that a budget director doesn't report to the CFO because then they would be at a higher level. So I hope hope that answers that question. All right, I'm going to go on um, here. Criterion seven. Um, real quick, we changed the order A, B, and C. If you applied last year, you'll see an order swap on those. Uh, just to make it a little easier. Um, so make sure you pay attention to that. But the big thing is this year, and, and one of our big announcements, and hopefully you've all seen it, is we have um, certified e-procurement solutions to be AEP certified vendors. And what that does is we have pre-vetted them. And so users of their system would be allowed to bypass a lot of the, the arduous reporting requirements and submission requirements for this uh, criterion. And for those of you who submitted in the past, you know, you've got to take multiple screenshots and it could end up being 20 pages long uh, in order to show us how your e-procurement solution works. But now, if you use one of these e AEP certified e platform vendors, um, you, all you have to do is submit one screenshot showing the main screen of the system that you use. And just put a statement in there that you certify that you meet all those requirements. And Rebecca, just an announcement for you. We've got one more. She's, she says there's only one. Yes, up until a few days ago, we've only had one pre-certified. We just added OpenGov to that list. Um, so if you go on our website, you'll see OpenGov as an AEP certified vendor. And we are going to be modifying the information in the application to reflect that shortly. So OpenGov and, and Planet Bids are AEP certified vendors. And, and we hope to get more. And if, you're, if your e-procurement platform is not AEP certified, reach out to your contacts. Say, hey, this is, a, you know, this is something that they should do. It's a, big, uh, it's a big positive for you as you fill out the AEP application and, and encourage them to become certified vendors. How can we find out if your e-procurement platform is one that's certified? Well, if you're not using Planet Bids or OpenGov, then you're not certified at this point. And again, we, we welcome them all. Um, you know, I reached out to as many as I could when we, when we started this program. I've had conversations with, with uh, MDF, which is BidNet and um, Periscope. Can't remember who else MDF has. 
Um, but I've talked with them. Unisolutions has has three or four different ones. So anyways, if, if yours is not AEP certified, reach out to your contacts and encourage them to go through the process. All right, on to criterion 10, which is the um, certification of chief procurement official and staff, specifically 10B, we added certified contract management associate as one of the accepted certifications for the staff. And uh, that is through the um, NCMA, National Contract Management Association. We have way too many acronyms in our in our world. Mark, you've asked CFCM. Can you tell me uh, what that acronym stands for? I don't recognize it. Is it uh, is it a Florida contract manager? Federal federal contract manager. I think it's it's certified federal contract manager from NCMA. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, certified federal contract. Um, we don't recognize that one, Mark, and the reason is uh, we don't we don't have federal um, we don't have members um, or applicants that are federal. Um, so so ours are all um, state and down state and local. The only one that is kind of a federal association is out of Canada, and they're the the Defense Construction Association of Canada. They are federal uh, from a Canadian federal standpoint, but but all of our um, certifications are at the the uh, local or excuse me state and local level. Say so I work for HUD, which is federal, state, and local. Well, Mark, that is uh, that is a great um, example. We can definitely take a look into that. Right now, it's not accepted. We review um, these things every year. But we'll make a note to that um, for any of, of my for any of my uh, people that that uh, are uh, any of my evaluators. If you could take note in April, I see a comment on that. Um, we'll we'll talk about that at our at our meeting this year. All right, on to Criterion Twelve. Um, we clarify that the procurement association must be for the benefit of multiple jurisdictions or agencies. And criterion 12, where is my application? There we go. Criterion 12 is a uh, leadership position in a procurement association. So again, that's, uh, uh, we just clarified that, that whatever whatever procurement association it in, it, it must be for multiple jurisdictions or agencies, not just for your particular agency. All right, wow, I talked a lot. It is, uh, we are on the one hour mark. Uh, I'm gonna stop there, stop sharing. I um, am able to stay online if we have any additional questions. I would ask if any of our evaluators can, uh, if you have the time, you can stay online as well, to answer any additional questions. Uh, but if not, thank you all. We appreciate your attendance. Don't forget that we have three more of these. Um, you can register if you have not for those sessions uh, at, on our website, the same, uh, the same place you register for this one. We will post our, um, our recording on the website. Uh, within the next uh, day or, or two. So you can access that or share that with your counterparts or your associations. And with that, we're going to end the recording. Thank you. We appreciate your attendance. We appreciate Ken Heckman and Axia for supporting our educational session. And again, um, feel free to stick around and ask questions if you wish. For those of you who are off, thank you very much. And uh, we look forward to your submission.